Welcome to part 4 of the video tutorials on organic functional groups. This tutorial is going to focus on the common name for ethers and the naming of phenols and then the IUPAC naming for esters. Let's get started. Alrighty, so the IUPAC name for ethers is very clunky. So for my classes, we will just focus on the common names. It's very straightforward. We name the R groups as though they were branches or substituents, right? Using our homologous series names. So in this case, we would have the two ethyl groups because there are two carbons on each branch, all right? And then we simply end the name with the word ether to let everybody know, all right? So for example, this would be di ethyl ether. This is one of the most common ethers and so it's frequently just simply called ether. So if you're ever reading something and it describes ether and you're wondering which one, most likely it's diethyl ether. Of course, so here's our ether again, of course the R groups don't have to match. So we could have a methyl on one side, and then a one, two, three, four, a butyl on the other side. And so there's really no rules in common names, but we'll follow the IUPAC convention, alphabetical. So we would call this butyl, methyl, ether. So that's about all there is to naming ethers. It's, the, it's a good practice for um, strengthening your understanding of the homologous series, meth, eth, prop, but, and so on. And then phenols, um, we'll briefly go over those, right? Remember that the OH group is bonded directly to the benzene ring. And so we've talked about these before, but I think it's worth a very brief review. This would be given the one position, two, three, four, five, six. So we would have a three carbon branch. So we would describe this molecule as three propyl phenol. And then um, just a, a quick reminder, right, that aromatic rings, benzene rings in particular, are the only rings we can write condensed formulas for. So if we wanted to write the condensed formula for phenol, C6H5OH. So remembering that this is going to represent the benzene ring. And then we would have the OH coming off. Okay. Now let's get to the more challenging part of this tutorial, esters. So let's look at how we would give the IUPAC name for carboxylic esters. Okay, the main thing to focus on here is the carbonyl carbon. The carbonyl carbon is going to help us identify the root or the parent chain. So the carbonyl carbon of the ester will always be given the, f the one position and then we want to count carbons, so we have to go in the direction of the carbons. Alrighty, so now we have basically a five carbon parent or root. Alright, so this is, um, so we'll, this gets assigned the suffix anoate. So we would describe this as, so this entire part right here, well there's the anoate part. And so this would be pent anoate. All righty. So we have to make sure, though, that we've accounted for all of the atoms in the compound. So this, we consider the R group coming off of the singly bonded oxygen. We consider this a branch, right, or a substituent. So this goes where branches always go, in the prefix. So we have another carbon chain of, as a branch, and so we would describe this as 
isopropyl pentanoate. I put a really big gap there on, on, on accident. All righty. So we see where all aspects of the compound are accounted for through the IUPAC name. All righty. Um, esters are very interesting because a lot of artificial flavors are esters. Esters smell very sweet most of the time. All righty. So let's draw the skeletal line structure for ethyl butanoate. That would smell like, smell and taste like pineapple. All right. So the but, right, tells us we have a four carbon chain. And we know we put the carbonyl off the first carbon. And the O8, right, the O8 part tells us here we have the ester. All right. So the but gave us the four carbons, the anoate gave us the ester, and then last but not least, even though it comes first in the name, ethyl. So that would tell us we would have two carbons coming off of our ester group, oxygen. Okay. Now, let's look at, um, this is the structure for orange flavor. I've shown the skeletal structure in two different orientations to help you um, build your comfort with esters. So these two, com these are the same compound. When in doubt, name a compound. If it gives you the same name, then they're the same compound. Whenever we're looking at um, carbonyl compounds, we're always going to focus our attention on the carbonyl carbon. And this is going to give us our parent, 1, 2. All right? So, and that, and then here, this tells us, this tells us a no eight as the ester. And then we count this, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Right? So there's our octal group. Okay, so now we can put all the pieces together. This would be octal, and then two carbons is F, and then a no eight to tell everybody it's an ester. This compound in particular is very interesting, or the ethno ethanoate, because whenever we have this configuration right here, this is the um, acetate, and so the other way that you will see this written is we still have our octyl group. That hasn't changed. But ethanoate is often replaced. We could say that this is octyl. And I'll just, I guess I'll do it in red. Acetate. Okay? So having one methyl group coming off of the carbonyl carbon is a very common situation. And so we have the common name A-C-E-T. Whenever you see A-C-E-T, you know that the R group is equal to a methyl group coming off right here. All right? So basically, we're ignoring the carbon of the carbonyl carbon. All right? So there are two names. You'll either see this written as octal ethanoate. More likely, you'll see it written as octal acetate. So esters are very important. Um, when we get to the chapter where we study fats and oils, fats and oils are tri called triglycerides. Why? Because there are three ester groups present. So go ahead and look at this, um, this structure for a, a triglyceride and circle the ester groups. Right? We can see them right here. One, two, three. Okay, so that concludes our video tutorial on naming ethers, phenols, and esters. Take some time now to work a few homework problems to reinforce your understanding.